Hi, I'm Lynn Richards. I'm the president and CEO of the Congress for the New Urbanism, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about the incremental code reform work we've been doing in Michigan and how we can improve our neighborhoods through simple changes in zoning codes and land development regulations. CNU's mission is to champion walkable urbanism. We provide resources, education, and technical assistance to create socially just economically robust, environmentally resilient, people-centered places. Why are so few cities and towns and neighborhoods in Michigan walkable? Why is it so difficult to find vibrant communities where people of all incomes, ages, and backgrounds can live, work, shop, and play? Because it's illegal. In many cities and towns across Michigan, zoning codes and land use regulations have made building these places illegal. So when public officials, developers, and neighborhood residents start demanding more walkable and vibrant places for their main streets, their small towns, their neighborhood centers, they quickly learn that one of the first steps they need to do is to legalize walkability. When we change our codes to create more complete places, we create communities that have more affordable housing, that are more inclusive of different races, faiths, ethnicities, and income, and are more environmentally and economically sound and robust. This issue becomes increasingly important as Michigan communities seek to address the long-standing racial biases in their zoning codes. From redlining to exclusionary zoning practices, many communities are now realizing that their land development regulations legalize racism and now need to change. So today we're gonna to walk through two documents we prepared for Michigan, Enabling Better Places, A User's Guide to Zoning Reform, and Enabling Better Places, Commercial Corridors and Shopping Centers. We wanted to look at incremental coding reform efforts that can occur all through the, your downtown, your main street, your neighborhood center, your adjacent residential area, and then moving into commercial quarters and shopping centers. You can see that what the changes might be through these two documents across the entire downtown to rural um, transect. I wanna first give you a little context on the process that CNU created to address some of these most problematic coding barriers first and how it's different from traditional coding reform efforts. Right now in the United States, there are about 42,000 units of local government, many of whom still have outdated zoning codes and ordinances. And there have been a number of national efforts over the years to try to help accelerate that process or to give local governments additional information. CNU Smart Code, the EPA's Quick Fixes, American Planning Association's 500-page national code are just a few of the examples. And, and I should know, I've been involved in a lot of these efforts. And the fundamental issue, the fundamental problem is that they're not context sensitive. Coding is not a one-size-fits-all. Cities, towns, and neighborhoods, rural villages all have different needs based on where and how the residents want to live. That's why current zoning overhauls are so expensive. It requires considerable time, significant will, and public buy-in. But think of how much time it's going to take to do all of that city by city through 42,000 cities. So instead of working city by city, what about state by state? As we discussed, the coding issues in Albuquerque, New Mexico are very different from the coding issues in Portland, Maine. So what are the most problematic barriers that occur in most communities at the state level? And so instead of a complete overhaul of a code, what about changing just one aspect? And that's the central point in our process. Instead of focusing on all of the coding changes that would guarantee a good place, let's just start with one coding change that can enable a better place. For example, for any new building on your main street, require or allow that parking is in the back instead of in the front. Places evolve over time and small coding changes can help enable and facilitate the changes that the community wants. We are going to go into more detail on all of this. 
My goal for our time together is that you'll come away from this video with a better sense of why we have the development patterns that we do and how you can engage to make better places. Specifically, you'll learn about the barriers to walkable urbanism, the methodology and processes for CNU's incremental code reform effort, areas of reform that are most relevant to you, and how to apply this information that's available in these guidebooks locally. During these training videos, you'll hear from me and Mallory Batches, and we're both from CNU. Matt Lambert is a principal at DPZ Co-Design. Susan Henderson is a principal and founder of Placemakers. Mary Madden is founder and principal of Madden Planning. And Richard Murphy is a program manager and all-around guru at the Michigan Municipal League. As you can tell, it's an all-star team, and we're excited to present you today's material. So let's get started.